So today we're going to look at our first example of calculating a confidence interval for one population mean. So the last time we looked generically at steps for doing that, now we're going to calculate a confidence interval looking at the mean number of hours for watching reality TV per week for GVSU students. So the very first step that we have is going to be identifying the population. So I would like to make an inference on the population of GVSU students. So this is going to be my population. Next, we have to identify our sample. And according to your notes, you'll see that our sample is going to be 175 GVSU students. So remember that our goal is to identify that large group that we want to make an inference on. So here it's going to be GVSU students as a whole student body. And then we have to identify which group is going to help us make that inference on that population. So here we're going to use 175 GVSU students. The second step is going to be stating the assumptions. So remember that assumptions have to do with the sampling distribution. So here we are going to assume the sampling distribution. of x bar is the normal distribution. So to be able to use the formulas and the calculations that we have, this is an assumption that we have to be able to make. Now, we have to make sure that that assumption is okay to make doing what's called checking conditions in step three. So if you remember from last video, to check conditions, it actually has to do with sample size and if there's presence of outliers. Well, for this particular situation, because we actually have 175 as our sample size, here we're going to say that our conditions are met because we have a large sample size. So here our conditions are met because n equals 175, which is essentially large enough. So even if we have some extreme outliers, it's not going to be a big deal because the sample size is large enough to be able to handle those. Now, in step four, because we verified that our assumptions are met in checking conditions, we can use the formulas that we have to actually calculate the confidence interval. So the very first thing that we need to do is to identify x bar. So according to the notes, our sample mean or x bar is 2.09. Next, we have our um, calculation of the t star multiplier. So t star, remember, you'll be looking up on that t distribution table. And based on uh, an n equal to 175, we would have 174 degrees of freedom. So with 174 degrees of freedom, because the table only goes to 100 and then it jumps down to 1,000, you would use the 100 degree of freedom line. And then we want it to be 95% confident, so we would use that particular column. Next, we have to calculate standard error. So remember, that's S divided by N. So for this problem, S is 1.64 and then we've already identified that n is 175. So for standard error, we'll calculate um, that to be 0 0.1240. So finally, before we calculate the interval itself, we have to calculate margin of error. And remember, that just takes t star, so 1.98, times standard error, 0 0.124, and that comes out to be 0.2455. So now we have the information necessary to calculate the confidence interval. So I'm going to actually move into here. We have 2.09 plus or minus that margin of error. So first, we're going to subtract to get our lower bound. I have 1.8455. And then add to get my upper bound, which is 2.3355. So that's the confidence interval without an interpretation added to it. In step five, we want to interpret it. So as I said, and as it says in the notes, we want to 
do a 95% confidence interval. So we'll say we are, and that's how confident we are. So we're 95% confident. Then we're going to state our parameter definition. So here we have calculated information for mu. So that means we're gonna state the mean. So we're 95% confident the mean. And then we'll state the variable that we're measuring. So here we're measuring uh, reality TV watch per, me per week. So it's gonna be, we are 95% confident the mean hours of reality TV watched per week. Then we would state our population. So that was GVSU students. And then we'll state the interval itself is between um, 1.8455 and 2.3355. Now you could restate hours per week there, but because I have included that in my parameter definition, I don't need to include it for a second time here. Make sure that you can see that. So this is our first form of inference for quantitative data. So remember we have a population that we were trying to make an inference on. Here's the interpretation of it where we say we're 95% confident. So that's the confidence level. And then our parameter is the mean hours of reality TV watched per week by GBSU students is between, and here's the interval we calculated based on what was seen in step four.